as I said uh, at the outset, we need to uh, bear with uh, you know, some basics of culture because it is uh, so important, the culture and worldview. So let's uh, check out uh, some basics of culture uh, to uh, prepare ourselves uh, better for our studies of uh, worldview and uh, uh, Christian worldview. The uh, first point uh, I uh, prepared here is uh, this one. Culture is much more complex and dynamic than we generally know. Uh, culture in everyday terminology, most ordinary people, when they hear of a culture, they basically think of uh, like uh, what one eats or what one sings or dances or foods, that kind of thing, right? That is a part of culture, but that's not all. Uh, more important uh, is uh, actually what underlies those things, okay? So this captures that. Culture is much more complex. Complex means it has a depth, okay? It's not only what you see at external level, but uh, there are important things under that, okay? That's a complex, complexity. And uh, dynamic means it changes over time, dynamic. It's not static, okay? The so culture is uh, deep, and the culture is changing over time. Uh, they do this uh, more than we generally know. Okay, okay. Uh, the second point, the culture constitutes the most important part of a self-identity to the extent of almost identical. Uh, we'll come to that uh, shortly, but this uh, point uh, shortly, uh, but uh, uh, what it says here is uh, culture uh, is uh, one of the most important parts uh, of uh, what uh, constitutes a person's identity. My identity, like uh, you know, who I am, is very much determined by my culture. Right? If you are Filipino, then uh, Filipino culture is very much part of, uh, most important part of uh, your of uh, who you are, all right? Uh, so that's what it says here. Uh, and to the extent of almost identical means out of uh, three things uh, constituting a person's self-identity, culture is uh, dominant. So almost to the extent of identical. That's what I uh, mean here. All right. Now let's look at uh, culture as a structure, structure or construct. Culture is of a three-level construct, okay? Uh, level one, level two, and uh, bottom level, right? Level one is the external level, the one we see outside, which consists of uh, behaviors, which consists of uh, languages, consists of uh, food and clothes, uh, dances, those are symbols and others, right? And uh, second is uh, middle level, which is not seen, unseen, but which is very important because this consists of uh, values and beliefs, okay? People behave, the people act following their values and beliefs, all right? So this is very important, even though it's not seen. And uh, below that, the core level, the bottom level is a worldview, which actually is behind uh, values and beliefs. Values and beliefs of a person, of a culture comes from one's worldview, right? So these two are very, very important, more important perhaps. But these three levels are all interconnected, okay? All right, then uh, next question is, uh, what does it constitute worldview? Uh, how is worldview shaped up, okay? Uh, according to anthropology and other studies, uh, results of researches, Worldview is largely shaped by people's religion, traditional religion, people's myth, the story they hear from their grandpa and grandma, okay, uh, from early on. And then dominant ideology of the day, okay. What is dominant ideology of the day for East Asia particularly? It's a modernity, it's a globalization, all right? It's economic development, for example. These are dominant ideology of the day, and these three shape up worldview, okay? Of these three, these two, people's traditional religion and then dominant ideology of the day are more important, okay? 
All right, uh, this uh, is uh, looked at uh, uh, by way of uh, schematic. I'm sorry, this is uh, <laughs> the schematic. It, the insides are uh, in Korea, and <laughs> this is this I draw from my published book, <laughs> published in Korean, and uh, I have no technical capacity to <laughs> change this into English. Okay, but this is okay because here are all I mean explained in English. Okay, uh, self identity and culture, right? One of the basics of culture, culture and self identity. Self-identity identity is formed by three things. First thing is a common human nature. Right? We are all human. Right? We all share human DNA. Is there anyone who here has a monkey DNA? No, right? We all are human. So we have a human nature uh, common. Right? But we as an individual are also different because of our personalities. Okay? Uh -huh. We have a different personality, characters, right? So these two, and of course, culture. Okay? These three uh, form one's uh, uh, self-identity, right? And of these, uh, culture is predominantly important, shaping up one's uh, identity. These three forming one's identity, okay? All right, uh, continuing this uh, three levels of a culture. Uh, external level, here again, in Korean, but uh, these are, you know, in English, these are what uh, go in here. External level, cultural products, behaviors, language, symbols, and rituals. Okay. Symbols include the uh, language, okay? Rituals include a lot of uh, worship services, baptism, you know, all those things, okay? These are what constitute external level of a culture. And below that, in the middle level, are values and beliefs, okay? Uh, when the values and beliefs are so important, okay? And these are the driving forces of uh, these, okay? And these values and beliefs are shaped up by worldview. That uh, worldview is uh, called the, the core of uh, you know, culture, okay, bottom level. And out of these three, the only level one is seen. Okay, other two are unseen because it's uh, below. Right? Okay, now the next question is, uh, what does uh, uh, constitute worldview? Okay? Worldview, the last one, the, cut, the bottom uh, level culture, is uh, largely formed by people's religion, myths, and dominant ideology, as I said already. Of these, traditional religion and ideology are more important elements than myth. Okay? All right. Uh, let me just... Uh, a little bit, okay. Uh, traditional religion, uh, for example, in in Philippines, most of Filipinos uh, they have Catholic, right? Uh, traditional Catholic, uh, old-fashioned Catholic, I should say. <laughs> okay, that's a Filipino. You know, most of Filipinos uh, religion, but Filipinos, in addition to Catholicism, they most of them are also you know, they have their own uh, view of the world, which is uh, quite animistic, okay? Mm -hmm. Animism is very important, particularly, you know, among tribal people, right? So that's our, you know, uh, preaching and mission context. If you visit, for example, tribal people to teach Bible and to preach to them, then not only Catholicism of Philippines, but perhaps more importantly, their animism, animistic worldview, is more important. That is a more important context for your preaching and teaching, right? So you have to touch on that. Okay? You have to change that, transform that by the power of uh, gospel. Uh, from now on, we move into the uh, more specific uh, content of worldview. Uh, 
as I said uh, at the outset, worldview answers, or well, worldview addresses uh, uh, big questions, okay, uh, of the life and of the world. And uh, these big questions are called uh, also foundational questions because that makes up, you know, the world. Uh, okay, foundational questions the world will answer. So we need to know what these are. Uh, there are seven what we call foundational questions, one, two, three, four, five, seven up to here. And there is uh, the last one, which is what we call existential question. Okay? So I listed up here eight uh, important uh, you know, questions comprising both the foundational and existential questions, okay? uh, which are addressed by any worldview. Okay? All right, so first uh, foundational question is, uh, what is the prime or real reality of the world? Uh, prime or real reality, you know, reality world is what we see and what we sense outside, okay? But then, uh, that reality uh, is something created or made uh, by something else, which is actually the, the prime reality, right? The reality under the reality we see is what you call prime or real reality, which is quite often God or spiritual world, okay? Uh, according to, for example, Christian worldview, but in other worldviews as well, uh, there is a prime or real reality, okay? The reality which is under you know, usual reality we see, okay, that's a prime or real reality. And uh, if it is God or spiritual world, this is what, it, what we often call theism, okay? Uh, study of God and the spirit, okay? And the second question is, what is reality or world, okay? What is reality or world? This is a foundational question. What is it, you know? The reality we see, touch and sense, or world, uh, depending on different worldviews, reality or world is defined very differently. For example, according to Hindu world, Hindu teaching, reality world is not a real thing, okay? It is an illusion, as you know, right? Uh, what a definition, right? But according to Christian worldview and uh, Confucian worldview, reality of world is real. Okay, uh, real world, which is, uh, you know, something we need to live in and then we need to handle, you know, with uh, responsibility, okay? But Hindu, according to Hindu and uh, even Buddhism, similar, reality is uh, only an illusion, okay? It's not a real thing, okay? Quite different, depending on worldview. That's why worldview answers, you know, these foundational questions. And the number three, another important question, what is a human being, humanism? Who are we? Who am I, human being? Okay. Again, depending on both views, there are many different teachings on who we are, who human beings are. Just, a, just a one quick, uh, you know, I uh, think I would like to say here is uh, uh, only Christian worldview, gospel worldview, uh, views a human being as a uh, most important pinnacle of uh, creation, but it says uh, that human being has a duality of a nature, human nature, okay? both good and bad. Okay? Uh, now only Christian worldview teaches you know, that human being is a such not other worldviews. Okay. So again, uh, depending on different worldviews, the definition of uh, who, hu uh, who human being is is different. Okay, the next one, what is death and uh, is there life after death or after life? This is, uh, you know, uh, most uh, serious concern most people have, right? Deep question, what is death? And is there life after death or after life? Actually, this question is not uh, often taken up these days. You know why? Because modern people 
those people who are stuck with the science and uh, technology and all those good things, uh, they are so afraid of uh, that they don't want to take this up. Okay? They usually avoid it, as you know very well, all right? But this is a real you know, concern, inescapable concern uh, everyone ha has to face. Okay? So we have to know what it is. And uh, of course, we need to know if there is a life after death or after life. Very important question, isn't it? Right? Uh, again, depending on worldview, view on this is different. Okay? Next one is a uh, question of morals and ethics. What is good and what is evil? Okay? Uh, Christian worldview teaches uh, you know, very clearly and explicitly on what is uh, good and what is evil. And there are many moral teachings because our God is a moral God. Okay? Yeah. But, for example, you know, uh, modern ideologies like post-modernity, they don't believe in ethics or morals, right? Ethics and morals is a personal choice, basically. That's what they say, right? Whatever they feel good, you know, uh, they go for it, and that's, uh, that's uh, you know, good. Whatever bad, they just uh, throw away, okay? That's bad. Uh, terrible, terrible, you know, consequences come out of that. Depending on this, okay? Next one is, uh, is it possible to know anything or truth? Epistemology, okay? Is it possible to know anything? Is truth, is there truth, uh, uh, for example, all right? That's the question. And again, uh, different worldviews uh, gives a different uh, answer to this question. Postmodernity, they don't say. They say that there's no truth at all. It's all subjective interpretation only, right? While we Christian faith, the gospel worldview teaches clearly that we can know, you know, uh, we can come up with truth. Because our God is all-knowing God, right? Uh, he teaches us the truth, and we can learn from Him. And also, being created uh, in His image, we have an uh, internal capacity to know, okay? The huge difference, again, right? Depending on which world view you go by. Next one is, what is life and history? Is life meaningful? And this is uh, another uh, very deep question. And uh, these days, uh, young people particularly who follow post-modernity values and lifestyles, they don't care much about these things, okay? But deep inside their hearts, they have this question, okay? So we have to rouse, we have to wake them up, okay? So that they would need the uh, answer to this question, okay? Because our gospel gives uh, the answer to this, okay? Best answer. Is life meaningful, for example? Again, depending on different teachings of worldview, meaning can be different, right? If one follows a post-modernity, you know, pleasure-seeking, whatever, uh, you know, you feel good, you do it, and that's the uh, meaning of life, okay? But we don't see that's the meaning of life, right? That's the way to destruction, right? Eternal doom. Lastly, but not leastly, this question of sufferings and evils. Okay? Existential question. Why are there sufferings in the world? Why are there evils in the world? Okay? This deep existential question is answered by world. Okay?